another testimony of if God is for you, who can be against you? This has been a round of the century. I was not supposed to win this. So now you guys are listening because we did win. And I can glorify God the way I want to glorify him. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, Quick Hits is back. It's good to be back. Uh, I know I've been away for a while. Uh, I've been out of town. I've been super busy, but I'm going to try to bring you a show every day. I'll be also back on Mixed Combat Radio at Matt the Hipster Hunter tomorrow. Um, Let's get into today's show. Um, Let's get into today's show. Mikey Garcia, we got a fun one. Calls it quits. We're going to see, we're going to weigh out his career, see where he ranks all time. Is he a Hall of Famer? Let's get into it. But before we do, please like, share, and subscribe. Follow uh, 3D Boxing, 3D Boxing Blog, or all forms of social media. Uh, Quick Hits comes at you every day, 8 to 10 minutes a day. Uh, Also, subscribe to our other channel, Texas Boxing Scene on YouTube. All right, let's get into today's show. Mikey Garcia. Um, Made the announcement today. Um, I, I just saw him too. Um, well, it just made the announcement on Monday. Um, this is it for him. Um, really good career. I, I believe it, it, it gets him into the Hall of Fame, and, and we'll get into why. Um, first off, he's a four division world, world champ 26, 30, 35, 40. If you do that, and he won legitimate belts. You're a Hall of Famer. He finishes a, uh, with a record of 40 and 2. He started off 39 and 0. Uh, wins over uh, Robert Easter Jr., Adrian Broner, uh, Dijon, uh, Zlatichinen, Ramon Martinez, Juan Ma Lopez, Orlando Salida, uh, Jonathan Victor Barrios, Mauricio Pastrana, uh, Barnaby Concepcion. And uh, Cornelia is locked early on um, in the title eliminator. It's a good career. It's it, it's a Hall of Fame career. I, I know there's not the outstanding names you want on it. There's not the legendary names. There is no, you know, I said, what is Mikey Garcia's, you know, best win? There's no one name that kind of jumps out at you. Um, I Robert Easter Jr., Broner is the most, you know, kind of quintessential win um, when he beat Broner. But, you know, Broner's legacy is taking a big hit. He's also got Juan Carlos Burgos, you know, at, at the uh, at Mass Square Garden. Juan Ma Lopez is a big name. Salido is a big name. Uh, Juan Ma was here in Dallas. Uh, Salido also at the Garden. Again, those are the names. Those are the resume. It's a Hall of Fame resume. It's a Hall of Fame resume. Four division world champ. I just gave you a list of really good fighters, world champions that he's beaten. It's a Hall of Fame career. Um, you know, when he absolutely destroyed Wama Lopez, um, Rocky Martinez and Burgos in succession, you know, he, um, he, remember he lost his belt on the scale, uh, with Wama Lopez. Um, then he moved up to 30, um, won a title with, with uh, Ramon Martinez, then beat Burgos as well. At that point, he looked like a super talent. He looked like an incredible talent, right? It, it, sky's the limit. Uh, after that, you know, wh- where does he end up? You know, all time great fighter. You know, I, I think he falls short of, you know, putting him on the top, you know, on top list. But at that point, it it looked like a- a- after those wins, uh, the Burgos and Martinez and Lope, uh, Lopez win, it, it looked like he was on a fast track to being pound for pound. Uh, it takes a two and a half year layoff. Two and a half year layoff. It's a long time to be out of the ring. He comes back. He beats uh, Ilio Rojas um, in a comeback fight. Uh, destroys him about five rounds. Then he gets the vintage knockout against Latichinen. Again, it's a vintage knockout against Latichinen. It's a good win. Okay? Um, it's not anything spectacular in namesake, but the knockout was spectacular. Because it's a good fighter. Latichinen is, like I said, world champion. Good fighter. Um, but you know, not not the name. You know, so teaching had some good wins. You know, it, it, but it's not a legendary name. It's not even a name that we even talk about anymore. He he, he went on to lose to Lewis Ritson, uh, a couple other fighters. But he's a good fighter. Um, I'm trying to. 
he beat Ivan Rudkish. That, that was, and then he went on and he won a vacant belt in his next fight. Um, he's a good fighter. <clears throat> But these are the kind of names that Mikey beats. I, I think the culmination of all of them and winning four belts and four weight classes, I, I think it puts him in the Hall of Fame. I, I know a lot of y'all are going to hate and say he doesn't have that vintage name on his resume, and, and you're not wrong, he doesn't. Um, but I, I want to hear the argument. Do you guys think he's a Hall of Famer? Mikey Garcia, 40 and 2, four weight division world champion. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, four division world champion. Um, let me know what you guys think. I, I think it's a Hall of Fame career. Um, you know, that two and a half year layoff. And then once he, he, he kind of, you know, he kind of had a Blake Griffin career, right? Like he was on top and he was right near, but just short of the best in the world. And then when it fell apart, it fell apart from quickly. And it all fell apart with that Errol Spence fight. He goes up to 147 when he really should be fighting at 35. He gets dominated by Errol Spence. Uh, comes back, fights Jesse Vargas after a layoff. Um, Wins the fight close, contested, controversially, I would say, or at least contested close. I, I, it was very close. You could argue Vargas eked out a draw. Or, you know, it was close. Beats Vargas and then gets stunned, shocked by Sandar Martin. Um, stunning, you know, upset of the year. And that's it for Mike e. Garcia. Um, you know, it's it, it just a shame that that's how his career, because it was a really good career, you know, and, and, and we'll leave off on his career with those three losses. Um, you got the, the teacher, um, not the three losses, the two losses and, and, and the Vargas win, all of which were, you know, lackluster and disappointing. The Sandow Martin fight was shocking. Um, he got dominated by Errol Spence. And, uh, then you got the, um, Vargas win. It's you know, it's not how you want to remember Mikey Garcia. Uh, you want to remember the the, the Remillard, the, the Orlando Salido, the Slatichin knockout, the Broner performance. These are how you want to remember Mikey's excellent timing, excellent combination punching, in and out on your quintessential boxing skills. Really good skills. Um, you know, good pop for you know at thirty five. Really, really good pop. Really good fighter. You know, fundamentally sound fighter. You know, if you were teaching a guy how to box, you, you could show him tapes of Mikey Garcia. Um, and, you know, that's it. It's it's it, it's a wrap now for Mikey. But it was an uh, excellent win. Uh, excellent career for Mikey. I think it puts him in the Hall of Fame. Let me know what you guys think. Leave your thoughts, comments below. Let me know if you guys think Mikey is in. If not, leave your arguments. Tell me why he shouldn't be in. Uh, it is June 29th, 2022. Uh, from Texas to the world, thank you and God bless. Don't miss a tweet, post, story, or video. 3D Boxing is on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Hit the subscribe button now to stay inside the ring.